Do you need help preparing and assembling your Zepco 202 rod and reel to get it ready for the water? If you're brand new to fishing or just need a refresher course, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Bang that little bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Today we're going to take your Zepco 202 rod and reel spin casting model, take it out of the package, get everything assembled, discuss all the parts and pieces, and go over the little terminal fishing tackle kit that came with it to get everything prepared for our first fishing trip. So let's get to it. So we're going to start out assuming that you have nothing to fish with. This is a complete ready to use rod and reel, a little tackle box. So let's get it out and take a look and get it set up to go fishing. All right, so this kit is what we call our terminal tackle. Terminal tackle is made up of the hooks, the little split shot weights, the snap swivels, and then some of the swivels. And then this kit came with two jig heads, an orange one and a chartreuse yellow that came with tails for each one. And then up here we have some floats. A lot of people like to call them bobbers. You'll see stick bobbers that look like these longer ones and then the little round ones. The hooks that came with this kit came in a variety of sizes. It looks like there's maybe two or three different sizes, but these are all very small hooks because we're going to be fishing for panfish. Sure, we could catch a larger fish like bass and so forth on these, but this kit is pretty much aimed at smaller, what we call panfish. Your bluegill, your crappie, your red ears, sunfish, little bitty fish, but they're still fun to catch and they're great to learn on. So as you see, I sorted the larger hooks with the smaller hooks, put the small split shot in its own section and we can always add more later and then I put the snap swivels and the swivels in their own section. Now let's talk about the difference between the weights and the snap swivels. Now the snap swivel is nice because you can open it up and slide a hook on there or the jig head and then use the weight of this as a weight underneath the bobber. But if the fish are really skittish you might want to go to a split shot on the line that you pinch on the line and then press down with a pair of pliers and then a smaller hook. Sometimes if the fish have been pressured a lot they won't want to see anything extra like this snap swivel. They'll go for a hook with the bait on it. But we'll demonstrate both. All right next we're going to talk about the rod and the reel. This is the fishing rod. Comes in two pieces. And then we have the fishing reel. This particular kind of fishing reel is called a spin caster. This one is made by Zepco. It's a model 202. Zepco is probably the most used reel and rod brand in the United States. Pretty much everyone who first starts fishing has probably picked up a Zepco rod and reel. The reason why the spin caster makes it so nice and easy is it's controlled by your thumb on this button. When you push the button in and hold it, it holds the line in place. So when you go to cast and you let your thumb off of the button, it lets the lure pop out and go into the water. So to get started with this, we pull this plastic tab, which is connected to the fishing line, out from the front, and you'll see it's tied on here. Now I can't pull the line out because it's in actual reel mode right now. The reel, which is this handle right here, is engaged. So when I push the button and hold it, it frees the bale inside, and since I'm still holding it, it's holding it tight. But when I let off, it lets me pull the line out. And then when I engage the reel by starting to crank it, you'll hear it click. And then you'll see it start pulling the, reel, the line back in. Now on the top here, you have the drag dial, plus or minus. What is drag? Drag is the tension we set on the reel so that if a fish pulls it, so if I loosen it all the way, we can let the fish play it will let it take more line out but when the fish gets tired we'll just keep reeling it a little more maybe he'll take some back out get a little more tired and we keep reeling until we get them all the way back into us but that's the drag that keeps the fish from breaking off all right so the next thing we want to do is install our reel onto the rod this fits in this little groove right here but first we need to turn this so that it separates from the base and then we'll take the bottom of it put it in place like that and hold it and then turn and tighten it back down and we just do it hand tight and there we have it we've installed the reel onto the rod so now as you see our finger rests right here and then we have a spot here for our thumb so that we can later cast Next what we want to do is take the second piece 
and line it up with these fishing guys right here. A lot of people call them eyes. But that's where the line goes through all along the rod. We want to make sure all of our eyes line up straight. So we can hold the rod sideways or up and just look down the pole and make sure everything lines up. That looks pretty good. And you see we have a lot of play in this rod, which will help us catch a lot of fish. But yeah, here's the top half, here's the bottom half, and they just come together right here. Makes it nice, so if you need to break it down, if you're on a bicycle, motorcycle, your car, or pickup truck, you can just break it down and lay it in the back seat. Or if you have room, you can leave it all assembled. And take it to the water just like that. Alright, for the next step in our process, we want to go ahead and cut off this plastic tag in. You can use a pair of scissors, nail clippers, whatever you have handy. You want to push the thumb button in, and then we're going to take the line and fish it through all of the eyes, and then bring the end of the line back to the reel. We can begin to tie on our terminal tackle, our hook, our weight, and the bobber can wait till later. All right, the first one is called the polymer knot, and we use it when we're tying off to a fishing hook, and we're only using one line. So what we do is we pass the line through the eye of the hook, then we pull out three or four inches, and pass the line back through the eye of the hook again. So that we make a loop on this side. So I like to take this loop and put it in my right hand and then move the hook in a little bit like that. And then I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to pass it around behind these two other sets of lines. So I'm pinching the tag end in the line. We call the end of the line the tag end because the little piece that sticks out is the tag. I've got the loop in my right hand. I got the hook sort of in the middle, but maybe move it a little bit back towards my other hand. I'm gonna take this loop and pass it under the other two lines, and then I'm gonna pass it through the loop that we just made. So that when I pull this this way, I have another loop in my right hand. Then I'm gonna take the hook and pass it through that last hoop loop that I made and then I'm gonna have a whole bundle of line over here now I'll start drawing tension down on it but before I pull this tight I want to stick it in my mouth and wet it with saliva so that it doesn't burn the line if you burn the line it just makes it that much weeder so I'm gonna lick it I'm just gonna take those two ends and pull them tight all right the next knot I'm gonna show you is called the improved clinch knot and it's good for tying on snap swivels or swivels. Now when would we use a swivel? Say if I had this 10 pound test line on and we weren't getting bit by any fish and we wanted to go to a smaller line to hide it and we wanted to say use 4 pound test. Well I could tie 10 pound 10 line to this end and the 4 pound test line to this end that goes down to the hook. Now in the case of this snap swivel I'm going to tie the line onto the end of the swivel and then the hook or the little jig head will go at the end of this snap. So let's talk about that. What we want to do is take our line and pass it through the eye of the swivel and pull it out about three or four inches. And then I'm going to take in these lines and put it back together. And then I'm going to start twisting this swivel so that I get like five or six or seven or eight or more twists in this line. Now what I want to do from here is take the tag end and poke it through above the eye in the little loop between the twists and the eye so that it goes in there and then I want to take that tag in and pass it back through the other loop that I just made by passing it through so I come back this way then I want to pull it just a little bit to put tension on it and then lick it again 
Now I've moistened it with a little saliva and then I'm just going to start pulling it tight. I'll pull the tag in first and then I'm going to slide this knot down to the snap swivel and then pull the line tight and then come back to the tag end and pull it tight. And you see how that knot just snugs right up there against the end? And then I will grab my clippers. I like using clippers with these clear monofilament lines over anything else. It's just easy to carry and use. And then I have a little tag in there. Now that I got the snap open, I can grab a hook, slide it right in there, and close it. And then we have the hook at the end of our snap. That wasn't that easier than you thought it would be. If you're ready to see this rod and reel combo in action, catching a fish, go ahead and watch this video right here. If you want to go over those knots one more time, I'll put those in a playlist right here. We'll see you next time.